everyone. My name is Julie. I am a librarian at the Nanaimo North Branch of Vancouver Island Regional Library, and I am here with another Verl Recommends video for you. I have brought five books uh, that I'd like to talk about, and hopefully you'll want to read them. And the five books I brought today are all on the theme of children's mystery books. And the reason I brought those books with me today is because we are in the midst of Summer Reading Club. And this year's Summer Reading Club theme is Crack the Case. Um, so we're doing a lot to do with mysteries this summer. I don't know if you've all joined Summer Reading Club yet. If you're between the ages of 0 and 12, we'd love to have you join. Uh, it's free. Uh, you can come down to any of our 39 branches and pick up a Summer Reading Club package. Or you can just go on to our website and you can just um, participate totally virtually from our website. And when you participate in Summer Reading Club, what happens is every day that you read, you just fill in one of these circles to say you've done some reading. And then when you get a whole week completed and get to one of these bigger squares, um, you get entered into a draw for prizes. And if you manage to finish all of your reading record by the end of the summer, then you get a medal. So we love to have everybody join. If you haven't joined already, there's still plenty of time. Um, so feel free to join up and uh, have some fun. So there we go. So yeah, I brought five of my favorite mysteries uh, to share with you today. Um, some are picture books, some are chapter books up to about you know grades five, six, something like that. And let's get started on that. So the first book I want to show you is Who Broke the Teapot by Bill Slavin. And this one is a picture book. And probably the best way to tell you about it is just to read what's on the inside of the jacket cover here, because it basically explains it. Scene of the crime, a very messy kitchen. Victim, mom's favorite teapot. Suspects, dad, sister, brother, cat, dog, baby. Motive, unknown. Who broke the teapot? So it's all about trying to discover who broke the teapot. Um, this is a wonderful rhyming book, uh, so it just kind of rolls right off the tongue. A uh, nice one to read at bedtime. Um, nice one for slightly older kids too, as you can try and figure out who may have broken the teapot. I have to say the ending to me was a surprise. I did not guess who broke the teapot. Maybe some of you will, um, but definitely I was shocked by who the culprit was. So that's who broke the teapot. Next up, I have Baby Monkey, Private Eye by Brian Selznick and David Serlin. And this one, as you might guess, is about a monkey. Yay! <laughs> now this one looks like it's kind of a long chapter book, uh, but it actually is a really quick read. Uh, you can read it, you know, in 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, so and the reason, maybe I should <laughs> tell you the reason for that. The reason for that is there's very few words on each page. Um, and there's a lot of illustrations and such. It's a really funny book, um, both the text and the illustrations. Uh, as I say, it's good for older kids who just you know want a quick story to read. It's also good for kids that are just learning to read uh, because there is a lot of repetition in the story. And also you can kind of tell what's happening by looking at the pictures. Oh, this is my absolutely favorite part in the book, so maybe I'll just share this little bit with you. Baby monkey puts on his pants. Because of course you've got to put on your pants before you can solve mysteries. That's kind of important. So here we go. Baby monkey is putting on the pants. Baby monkey is still putting on the pants. <laughs> Ow! Ah! <laughs> now baby monkey is ready. So it takes pages and pages just to get his poor pants on. Poor little monkey. So really humorous story. Um, I think you'll like that one. So that was baby monkey private eye. Next up, we have a much longer book. This one is Chris Grabenstein's uh, Super Puzzle-tastic Mysteries. And this one is a book of short stories. So if you like just, you know, quick stories, uh, this is the book for you. What I really like about this one is 
you read the short story and then you're not told what the solution to the mystery is right at that point. Instead, you're told to go to the end of the book and see um, who committed the crime. So it's a good one if you want to kind of pretend you're the detective and see if you can solve the mystery um, and see if you got it right. And another reason I like this book is it's uh, Chris Grabenstein is the uh, kind of editor. So there's a whole bunch of stories in here and the, every story is by a different person. Um, so, you know, if you don't particularly like one person's writing style, you can try somebody else's story and you might really, really like that one. Uh, so lots of variety in what you get in this one. And my favorite story in this one was, strangely enough, another one about a monkey. <laughs> I must have had monkeys on the mind when I was uh, thinking about mysteries. My favorite story was Monkey Business, a fun jungle mystery by Stuart Gibbs. Um, and it was just a really entertaining story about a monkey that gets stolen, but then before the kidnapper can get the monkey, you know, into a cage or into their car or something, the monkey escapes and creates absolute havoc and chaos um, all over the place, jumping on people and scaring people and such. So it had me laughing at parts. So some good stories in here for sure. So that's super puzzle-tastic mysteries. And then another chapter book I thought I'd share with you is The Case of the Burgled Bundle by Michael Hutchinson. And this is a Mighty Muskrats mystery. Um, I don't know if any of you have read Mighty Muskrats mysteries before, but they are a group of kids. You can see them on the front here. A group of cousins, actually. And they like to solve mysteries. And they all live on Windy Lake First Nation. And they're all members um, of the Cree and they're really, really good at solving mysteries. This is actually their third mystery, and there's another mystery that's gonna be published next year. Uh, you don't have to read them in order, though. You can read them in any order you want, which is really, really good. And in this one, all of the Cree from across Canada are gathering on the First Nation, uh, Windy Lake First Nations, and they are having a big ceremony. But in the middle of the ceremony, a treaty bundle goes missing. That's what the title refers to. There's this special package that's a treaty bundle that is an important part of the ceremony and it gets stolen. So the mighty muskrats have to try and figure out what's happened to it. Um, and the elders, of course, are really, really upset that it's been stolen. And one thing I really, really like about this book and this series is uh, Michael Hutchinson is a member of the Cree himself. Um, and so not only do you get a really good mystery with these books, you also get a lot of culture and history of the Cree. Uh, you, you, you learn a lot while you're reading these books. So I really, really enjoyed it from that point of view as well. So that's the case of the Burgled Bundle. And then the final book I brought today is The Parker Inheritance by Varian Johnson. And this book takes place in Lambert, South Carolina. And it's the story of Candace. And Candace has just moved to Lambert with her mother. They've moved into her grandmother's house. Her grandmother has died. And they've moved into her grandmother's house. And Candace makes friends with a boy across the street. And the two of them really, really like reading. Um, but a lot of the time, their parents don't have time to take them to the library because their parents have to work and things. So these two poor kids, they're looking for something new to read. And what they end up doing is they end up going into the grandmother's attic. And hopefully she has some books up there. What They do find some books up there, but what they also find up there is a envelope. And the envelope says, find the path, solve the puzzle. So Candace hmm, isn't sure is this meant for her grandmother. This is kind of strange. But she's very, very curious. So she decides she's going to open the envelope. And when she opens it, she finds a letter inside. And the letter talks of a great injustice that was done in the town of Lambert. And it promises a prize to the person who can solve the clues in the letter. And the clues kind of lead you through the history of Lambert, South Carolina. And what do you think the prize is? The prize is... Forty million dollars. Wow. <laughs> so of course Candace and her friend, they decide that they want to try and find 
this treasure, this prize. Um, and as they do so, as they follow the clues, they learn a lot about the history of the town. And we learn a lot about um, the history of black people in the United States. Uh, we learn a lot about discrimination. We learn a lot about racism, um, both in the past and then also the stuff that goes on today. So there's a lot, lot to learn in this book. One thing that I really, really do like about this book is that some of the chapters take place in earlier times. Um, so it's a bit like time travel. They're not actually time traveling, but we just, you know, get to have a glimpse into people who lived in the town in years gone by. So like there's a chapter from 1914 and a chapter from the 1950s. Um, so you really, really get to know the town. And you get to try and see if these kids can solve the mystery and win $40 million. I wonder if they can do it. All right, so those are the books I have to share with you today. Um, hopefully you enjoyed me telling you about those and you'll want to take them out of the library. Um, if they're not checked in when you get down to your library, don't worry about it. Just let us know you'd like to put them on hold and we can do that for you. Or you can just go to our website and we can, you can put them on hold that way as well. All right, so happy summer reading and uh, we'll see you again next time. Goodbye.